back to episode 36 of the Film Dudes Podcast. I'm your host, me, and I'm joined by two other guys. <laughs> me. Him. <laughs> and you. Well, at least that was the most exciting <laughs> intro I think we've ever done. <laughs> Up to a certain point. <laughs> I mean, at least it was different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you don't know who we are by now, please look back at our previous episodes. You got a lot of catching up to do. (laughs) Uh, You can probably skip over a couple for sure. Oh, definitely. Most definitely. But apparently you you need to watch the uh, almost three hour episode. There's some real gems in there for some reason. Okay. (laughs) The fact that we made one that's almost three hours long the fact that the almost three hour long one is the most viewed one (laughs) yeah that that surprises me i think can you see who views these videos not like individual names unless they were to like comment and go like i was the first one to comment oh i was the second (laughs) one okay (laughs) not unless they do that (laughs) Thanks, YouTube. But, um, yeah, I could look at the uh, statistics again. Um, so, let's see, what have I been doing? I've been watching, um, Star Wars The Clone Wars 2008. Um, after I watched the Gendy Tartakovsky 2003. Isn't that the same dude who did Samurai Jack? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, let's Google Samurai Jack. Yep, same guy. Because <laughs> I, gonna... I was like, that's the same animation style. <clears throat> Samurai Jack. I love how John DiMaggio basically looks like the king from disenchantment <laughs> in a picture i'm looking at of him <laughs> <laughs> i think i'm probably gonna end up watching that next but man i just cannot like stop watching cartoons for some reason you cannot that's all you talk about it truly is it's it's almost disturbing at this point but now i'm rewatching the clone wars because i finished <laughs> season five when it was on netflix before disney plus was even thought of uh and then i was disturbed at 33 <laughs> episode 33 i'm like oh wow this is just cartoons now okay yeah <laughs> Oh, I wow, wish look I could at that. Contribute, but I haven't really watched anything. Phil Lamar voices <laughs> Samurai Jack. Wow. Yeah. Huh, yeah, that's what I wanted to mention. The fact that I've watched so many different cartoons. I finished Naruto back in March, and then it was Codename Kids Next Door. Uh, well, I actually forgot one just now. Billy and Mandy. Yeah, there we go. Billy and Mandy. <laughs> And now uh, I finished Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends earlier in the week, and now I'm on to Star Wars The Clone Wars. And it's like, between 2001 and 2008, Cartoon Network seriously is like Golden Age Hollywood, where they just own people, apparently. Because all you see is like Phil Lamar, and Tom Kenny, and Tom Kane, and Greg uh, Gray Delisle... There's just so many names repeated over so many shows. It's like, man, at least six of these were running at the same time. And yeah. it's nuts, really. But it's like, damn, these these are some great voice actors because, like, oh, they really are kind of inspirational to just be like, yeah, I, I kind of want to have a career like that. <laughs> It'd be pretty good. So, let's see. Um, What was I even talking about before I went off on that? (laughs) Anyway, Landon's family's back together now. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the wife and kids came home early and 
surprised me on Wednesday while I was cooling off in the middle of uh, mowing the yard. Uh, and it's just been busy ever since. I, I did get around to uh, uh, watching the uh, third season of Master of None. And I entire Aziz Ansari, uh, you know, thing that happened with him. I, I thought it was a nice transition because it turned more towards uh, one of his friends that was, um, a, you know, black and lesbian. And the entire season was about her and her wife, which, of course, at some point, I guess they got married. I don't ever remember them getting married in, like, season two or or season one or anything like that, but, like, the troubles that they go through. And it, it was actually really interesting to watch as far as, you know, a, a five-episode series goes. Nice. Um did you see that the Friends reunion is going to be on HBO Max? Yes. Yes, I did see that. I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I, I enjoy watching Friends, but I can't say that I binge watch Friends. It's one of those series that if it's on, I'll sit and watch it. And, and you know, maybe watch like two or three episodes of it when it's back to back and and, you know, really enjoy it. But I don't actually think that I... I would ever like, you know, just go out there to, you know, watch the entire series ever again. Yeah, I'm kind of like forced to watch it whenever I go to the gym because <laughs> I, I can never time it right when Family Guy's on. <laughs> it's either that or watch, um, oh, what is that? God awful. Um, Supernatural. Oh, boy, the uh, CGI in that is yeah. just abysmal. Uh... I don't know. Friends is it's enjoyable. Uh there's some episodes I'd rather skip over. Um I really just watched the show for Matthew Perry cuz I'm a Matthew Perry fan, so um. It's it's okay. It's got an interesting enough storyline that's like nah, might watch this maybe but i mean it's fun but it's definitely been overhyped yeah i would agree that it's definitely overhyped i mean i'm i'm curious to see it i keep going back and forth it's like oh i could watch that and it's like no i really don't want to watch that no i could watch that so i mean i i don't know what i'm gonna do if i'm actually gonna watch it maybe i'll just watch it for you know, the sake of saying, oh, yeah, I saw that, and then I'll have something to talk about next week or or something. But, yeah, because it's a it's a film, isn't it? It's not a it's not an episode or a series or they, they just made like a movie out of it, right? Supernatural? It's basically just like a special. No, Friends. Oh, Friends. Yeah, the reunion. It's like, yeah, an hour and a half long. It's, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. I, I, I... As far as supernatural, I've I, I think I've seen like five minutes total out of the entire series. I think at one point <laughs> it was on, and I just like watched it for like five minutes. I'm like, oh, I want to watch something else. It's literally I could give you a rundown of every single episode. Two brothers go find some <laughs> uh, supernatural <coughs> roll credits being, and then they get into like a slap fight, and then some other stuff happens yeah that's basically the general synopsis of every episode <laughs> kind of sounds like a guy version of um buffy the vampire slayer <laughs> it probably is yeah <laughs> except not at all entertaining. that's a pretty lighting. good comparison god i have to complain about the lighting yeah it's supposed to be like dark and like dingy and whatever because they're hunting monsters and ooh, suspense, but it's like, seriously, one of you two, like, one of them is for sure the smart one. Carry a flashlight or something, please. <laughs> or at least, you know, have the budget to buy a light for your <laughs> camera. Like, what is this? Like, <laughs> who, who owns Supernatural? Let me just... 
let me just call out the studio that makes this so I can make sure I don't get a job with them, apparently. Oh, the oh, CW. CW. Yeah, I definitely don't want a job with the CW anyway, so I'll just throw that one away. <laughs> I mean... I, I, I would be willing to work with the CW. Oh. Yeah. What Didn't have they CW honestly made? The, uh, Arrow. Didn't they do Arrow? Yeah, okay, that's just a ripoff. Uh, I enjoyed uh, the first few seasons of, uh, well, the first couple of seasons of The Vampire Diaries. Uh, not that sure. Yeah, it's just What's a your retel- problem with Arrow? It's just a What's retelling of The Green Arrow. The Vampire the Diaries point is a retelling? Being? The point being, it's not original. The CW... Oh, for the love of Pete. Oh, for the love of Pete. Uh, here, uh, where do I even, how is it a retelling of, what is okay, the green I'm hero? trying to form words here, That's a DC comic character, apparently, now. that's all anyone needs to know to just go, ah, DC, okay, next. <laughs> Isn't that the oh, green lantern? It. Yeah, well. S- that... Says the guy who watches Star Wars, which is basically just the same stuff basic thing recycled over and over again (laughs) well at this point yeah but at the time when the clone wars was coming out it was still like lucas run and he actually (sighs) had like lore and stuff but just because it was lucas run did not mean it was good (laughs) well it's better than what it's at now about whose line is it are we sure (laughs) are we sure Let's remember that. What was that piece of crap? Oh, uh, THX 1138. <laughs> well, yeah, there was that. I was talking about Star Wars still. Uh, what was that real annoying character? Oh, um, you used to talk about Jar Jar Binks? Yeah, there we go. Oh, me said Jar Jar Binks. Okie day. Yeah, that's. That very annoying character. Fun fact, uh, Michael Jackson uh, wanted to play Jar Jar Binks bad enough that he approached Lucas. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Just just imagine any of that information. <laughs> uh, and now he's dead. I'd rather not. <laughs> um. But anyway, getting back to Supernatural, I mean... The show has its very funny moments, which I enjoy more than its serious moments because I can't it? take its serious moments seriously. I haven't. I've stuck around long enough to watch like an episode every now and then, but does it have a, give me a line that's funny without looking it up? Is it that memorable? Apparently, you didn't watch the episode where they're transported into the world of Scooby Doo. Okay, now that sounds actually somewhat entertaining. <laughs> there are funny lines. Okay, I just, hold up. It's been a while since Scooby I've seen Doo the episode. show. I, what? <laughs> I don't even oh know. Oh my god, me. kill me now. It's called Scooby Natural is the name of the episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have to a have nine, a sense of humor about it yourself. Has a nine point six out of ten on IMDb. <laughs> yeah, that is impressive. It's probably the best episode of the whole show. Oh well, yeah, because oh, that's funny. It's animated, and what were you just whining that I'm hooked on animation, Mister? Uh, oh, that's the best episode. <laughs> I wasn't whining about you being hooked on animation. (laughs) What are you talking about? I was just making an observation that that's what you've been focused on. (laughs) Animation. But honestly, I just want to, like, give a huge, like, round of applause for whoever the team was that created General Grievous. Because in every iteration, he has to be the coolest character. And just the voice acting as well, like, I don't know, just have a guy shout into a Pringles can, I guess, and play with that. But, (laughs) like, it's so well done. I love it. 
And I wish that there was like a standalone Grievous film. I will yeah. never stop talking about that because they're always going to be like, oh, what new Star Wars film will people want to see? And I'd be like, yeah, I would, I would definitely pay to see a Grievous film. Um, cause the only information we get is really in the Clone Wars when we see like the layer of General Grievous and how it's like just a couple rooms that show the evolution of how he just turns himself into a robot. There's a little bit of known lore that like he was trained by Count Dooku. Other than that, unless you're a diehard fan and you're like combing over dissertations or whatever, uh, there's really not a whole lot of like direct information on Grievous. And I think he's such a cool character that I I want to see like his backstory and all that. That'd be fun. Such a Grievous topic. <laughs> And there's the dad joke. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god, yeah. Okay, just Google General Grievous and it, it just vomits information <laughs> at me. Vomits, huh? Yeah, it's it's a lot. <laughs> There's over oh my god. Oh yeah, I have to mention that in the Gindy uh Tartakovsky two thousand three Clone Wars, you know the why hello there meme from episode three when Obi Wan hops up onto the platform and confronts Grievous. Yeah, vaguely. Okay, well, Apparently, George Lucas commissioned that entire team to really bridge all the gaps. And so when we first see <laughs> Grievous um, in that, uh, he goes, Hello there, General Kenobi. <laughs> and it was like, oh, wow. They really, they really wanted to bridge everything, didn't they? <laughs> But I don't know. There's uh, just an insane amount of information out there that's Wow. Originally General Grievous was a uh, freedom fighter for his home planet. Interesting. So basically what you're saying is you're just begging right now for this film to have. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> At some point, Stuart introduced me to the... Hello. Welcome back. I don't know what yeah. happened. Stuart introduced me to the Amazon Prime show Lore. Oh, and yeah. I think I created that in like two whole days. It, it was really interesting. Oh, you binged the whole thing already? Yeah. Even season two? Yeah. Oh, wow. I haven't. I just started season two, so... <laughs> what is it? Yeah, th there's a big transition on the layout of, of the episodes. Yeah, so... Between season one and season two, because the, the first ones, they're kind of narrated and tend to like go back and forth in between like different stories that are similar as far as lore goes and then uh by like season two it's just like one story about and, and no narration oh, it's okay. just yeah i like the uh the irish episode about the um I think it was like they thought it was fairies that were like oh yeah the woman yeah that one's memorable to me <laughs> um but yeah lore i discovered the podcast on apple music and wherever you get your uh podcast well actually it's apple podcast now but one day we can advertise like that as well <laughs> in the very distant future 
Um, but the lore podcast is very awesome. So many episodes that I'm like slowly going through. I really love the uh, Beast of Bray Road because that one is uh, the closest thing to having a lot of information where it's like, this could be very true. But uh, anyway, lore basically kind of gets into the myths and fairy tales that everyone's grown up with. There's a really great episode on, um, oh god, it's the history of... Oh god, name one of the cities that is very famous for cars. Um, Detroit? Are you talking about the... Detroit, yeah. That episode, I can't remember the name of it, but it's the podcast only. I don't think they have come out with um, a visual version of it yet. And I really hope that it continues. Um, It's been a while since season two came out, I think. But um, Yeah, I was going to say, I don't remember watching an episode that had Detroit in it. but... But the podcast is also equally fantastic. And I love the theme. Uh song that was written for it um but yeah the one about detroit kind of has like leprechaun legend as well um and uh it's it's really good that's a really really good one um trying to think of other ones (laughs) i think i discovered it late one night on halloween back in like i don't know 2015 maybe and i was just like nah, i'm just bored let's just look at podcasts those are new that's that's a thing that's starting to happen it's hip and happening <laughs> and uh i was like oh okay this is this is really good and then i couldn't sleep because <laughs> i listened to a really really good scary one that was like the ghosts of the lighthouse or whatever that was the first one i listened to and um yeah, I just got hooked on it. I was I was like, oh, I love this. So now that I've started up the night shift again at the bakery, I might start to listening to the podcast more often because there's a whole lot of standing around in those shifts. <laughs> yeah, the, the Prog Clock was really interesting too. Which one? The Curse of Orlodge, the, the uh, Clock Tower in Prague. Has, that's got to be a season two one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you'll really enjoy that. It's it's pretty interesting that you know the the clock tower is cursed and. Hmm. Yeah. Right. But I love how uh, the producer of The Walking Dead and the X Files are in on this, and it's like, well. Um. <laughs> hopefully it uh, <laughs> continues <laughs> just as much as those two shows have yeah, I'm sure that it'll be around at least for like at least another couple of seasons well yeah more. September 13th 2017 is when the uh, season 1 trailer came out and then I don't know. Oh, there's the Robert the Doll. No, no. Oh, yeah, Robert the Doll. That no, no, was... no. You had to mention it. Oh, God, Robert the Doll. Moving swiftly along. <laughs> oh. Yep, please. Mm. The, the lycanthropy one was really good, too. Lycanthropy? Yeah, that's what I said. In a Is really that how you way, pronounce it? Sure. <laughs> lycanthropy, lycanthropy, potato, potato... <laughs> The, I was gonna um, say, it depends on where you want to put your emphasis on the syllable. Inf- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. It's just not commonly pronounced that way. But sure, that's why I kind oh. of have an interest in. Uh, well, the reason that I pronounce it lycanthropy is because when you're talking about lycanthropic lore, yeah, it's a it, lichen. It just, Yes, lycanthropic, instead of like lycanthropic lore. Or... I don't know. 
tomato tomato you know what i'm you know what i'm talking about see si, i like I potatoes so. <laughs> I, I like how it started off with the story of um saint patty dealing with like the wolf people oh yeah 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 that one yeah that yeah. i thought that was like a really interesting storyline and then all of a sudden it went uh Oh, uh, yeah, the like the Germany thing. Uh, yeah, the basically the true story of Little Red Riding Hood it wasn't such a happy ending. I mean, even like the one where she lives, it's still kind of messed up. Yeah, like oh, they cut open the wolf and just left a rotting carcass there. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. Um, you didn't know me, that, man. IMDb website has apparently updated, and I'm having. Wow, okay, Joe, that's funny. You were talking about Burke and Hare uh, mm -hmm. a while back, and that is the first one in episode, or in season two, so I guess I haven't watched season two yet. Oh, wow. Um, that's interesting. Oh, Ghosts in the Attic, I think. Um, I might have heard that episode on the podcast. Uh, oh, there's the Prog Clock one. Um, but yeah, Burke and Hare, that's the one I was talking about, Landon, where, uh, yeah, the, the Scottish, um, grave robbers and how it's like the, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the beginning. Well, they of weren't modern... grave robbers. That was the weird thing. They just, they didn't want to dig up graves like that's all the true, other, yeah. like all the other people. So they ended up just killing everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's messed up. <laughs> and they did pretty good at it, too, if uh, yeah, they, they hadn't picked the wrong person. What, they went and did it for, like, 10 or 20 years without getting caught? I don't know how many years, but they did it for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Burke uh, that got they... prosecuted for it, right? It was... Here's the one that turned state's evidence, or king's evidence... Oh, something like yeah. that. Yeah, testified no! against his body. Oh, yeah. Amazon Prime has officially canceled Lore Season 3. You rich oh. bastards. Son of a goont. Well, I'm canceling Amazon. Meh. How do you like that? <laughs> no, they don't give a shit because they're already making tons of money from everyone else. What website is this? This is a mess. Chuck yeah. Bezos is laughing griefs right now man that sucks oh well amazon's canceling a lot like i i do love amazon shows because i love lore i love bosch they're canceling that because oh police and whatever there's so much more that they could do from the books but eh, let's let's all complain about everything and not just appreciate the fact that it's fiction well, actually, a lot of Bosch is based off of real stuff, but... <laughs> comes down to the cancel culture. Man, yep. Let's cancel the cancel culture. I already did. Oh, yeah. I was on that before the cancel culture even came. It came, and I went, no, I'm not doing that. Oh, I had a weird um, thing the other day somebody recognized me in public and they're like oh i love your podcast and i'm like oh god <laughs> did you ask which one <laughs> yeah that was weird so um hi to you who i met somewhere <laughs> it's been it's been a few days <laughs> a lot's oh, happened man. since then <laughs> smooth yeah. Oops. They said that they like their podcast or your podcast. Uh, I mean, it's, it's it's on my channel, but yes, it is our podcast. <laughs> well, you can call it yours. So if anything does happen, <laughs> yeah, just uh, what is well, this? Well, I'm just trying to clarify. Is it? this podcast or is it like another podcast that I you're doing definitely don't have any other podcasts so i mean i've got oh, my wow. twitch my twitch stream which is like schrodinger's stream at this point <laughs> oh good old schrodinger mm -hmm. 
So, yeah. Somebody actually said that they like this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Wow. <laughs> I don't I don't know what you have to be smoking to enjoy this, but glad somebody likes it other than Joe. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> I guess I guess we'll have a um film dudes con in 2025 maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> Are we going to be around in 2025? I don't know. <laughs> oh god. So um yeah, uh Let's see. Man, I I was joking earlier in the week as well how I'm like turning into this weird retiree apparently already and I've kind of <laughs> I know I'm watching a lot of cartoons, but at the same time, anytime I go to the library these days, I'm just drawn to the documentaries for some reason. And I've watched this one, uh, PBS Nova. I really love how they do PBS Nova um, docs as well. And that makes me feel so old because I'm like, oh, me programs on. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, I love it. So. <laughs> that's that's my new guilty pleasure or whatever um <laughs> just watching weird well-made documentaries but anyway uh the pbs one, uh bombing hitler's super gun so apparently back in world war ii around 1943 um hitler was building this gigantic insane compound in france that had the potential to reach uh london by just shelling it uh without flying planes over and so joe kennedy jr was actually tasked of flying essentially the first drone using a really crappy tv um unfortunately the uh drone was essentially hacked by a radio signal <laughs> that's how it was controlled back in ye old times and uh what was stupid is they actually had to fly a plane next to the drone <laughs> for a certain amount of time before they just decided to crash it um that's how it was supposed to be planned anyway so i was like is it really a drone because you're basically right next to it so you might as well be in it i guess <laughs> But, yeah, uh, I guess it was technically hacked and it exploded because systems overheated. But, yeah, it's fascinating to know that drones were kind of actually invented in uh, 1943 uh, during World War II. And they had, like, very basic camera setups. Um, Came from RKO, right? I don't know about that one. They didn't really talk about, like, where it was from. But, yeah, it's not so much a drone as it was literally just a bomber plane with a camera on it. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it was it was a really good one. And then, relating to uh, Landon's studies there, I also watched uh, Iceman Reborn, also a PBS Nova. And it's about... Utsi, the Iceman, who is, like, the most well-preserved mummy, technically. Uh, well, a natural mummy, as they call it. Where it's the, the guy frozen in ice that they discovered in, like, I don't know, 1971 or something. Um, yeah, just Google Otzi, the Iceman. Uh, oh, 1991. Okay, well, I got the one right, so that's half a point. <laughs> you got the <laughs> only, 19. I was only, you know, 20 years off, so in the grand scheme of things, that's nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, you fail so you can learn. Oh, yeah. And I'm just going to sit here and listen to you do it. I mean, yeah, it's funny. I guess <laughs> clearly I enjoyed this because I'm just rambling off the information that I picked up from here. Um, but yeah, uh, it's... I just love documentaries for some reason now. Um, the History Channel ones are okay, depending on who's doing it. But uh, PBS oh, anyway. Nova, if you want to actually learn something, go go through PBS. 
Well, History Channel used to be really good, but then they... But then Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blame it on the Aliens. That's it. Oh, God. <laughs> the Aliens. Aliens. <sighs> There's no other explanation except for the fact that it's, it's aliens. <laughs> But seriously, I mean, History Channel used to be really good. That's where I learned a lot of stuff with the History Channel. I, I like the Pawn Stars little trivia things that they do. And for a while, it was good until, you know, all the scandals and stuff started to surface. I didn't pay attention to the scandals. I mean, it was kind of staring you right in the face when you look at Chumley's just like, uh, hey man, uh, can I borrow some money, man? Uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, we used to watch Pawn Stars, but my mom always hated it because <laughs> she couldn't stand, I, I don't know why, but she was bothered by Rick's laugh. What was Rick's laugh? <laughs> As weird as that is. I can't remember Rick's laugh now. It's... I I don't know. You'll have to go play it. <laughs> I remember one day when we were living at the dorms and the uh, food service boss, uh, James, the, my, my best boss that I ever had, uh, I went in one day and he had this like black button up shirt on black pants and he had like his black tampa bay pirates hat on and i was like you look exactly like the old man from pawn stars he's like didn't he just die and i was like oh yeah whoops <laughs> wow i was wondering where that story was going because it's like okay james is dressed in black with a black tampa bay buccaneers <laughs> Yeah, where, where was it going? You were there, too. <laughs> was I? Yeah. So it looks like Rick's laugh is pretty heavy on the exhale. He's more like a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's pretty close to it, yeah. Yeah. But I always loved how they always had a bunch of... They were always like, let's... Let me call my friend. He's an expert. Oh, yeah. Like, how and... many experts do they have? <laughs> yeah, like, and also how, like, <laughs> how close did they get? I would have loved to have seen the crew just, like, sat around for three hours. Like, oh, he's, uh, he's still stuck in traffic. Because, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of just... us changed. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess uh, my family were more of the uh, American Pickers type. Oh, I don't know why and I don't like Pickers. There's there's the same amount of education in that as Pawn Stars, which is mostly just a couple of guys bumbling around randomly telling you things. But I've actually been to both Picker stores. Well, and I've actually met the what the. Let's see, which one is it? The taller dude? What's his name? Oh, know. yeah. You clearly met him if you don't even know his name. <laughs> oh, it's been that long. <laughs> I was in a line with people coming to... It was at the... I think it was the Nashville shop. <laughs> one sec. It's been so long, and I've gotten so old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to fill the gaps here. Yeah. I know. We're, we're I, I'm just having a hard time laugh. typing now because you're making me laugh. We're notorious for dead air. Mike Wolf, that's his name. Oh, that's what we should do next week. We should just do an hour of dead air. Pure <laughs> silence. I mean... I can do that. We just about almost do every time I hit record because I forget which settings I'm supposed to have it on. <laughs> 
You ain't yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get it queued up where you can like hear things in the background, but none of us will talk. It'll be a silent treatment for an hour. <laughs> Shit. That'll be the final episode. It's just a massive troll once we finally have like hundreds of fans throwing money our way. We'll just be like, all right, we're done. <laughs> Here's an hour yeah, of nothing. <laughs> You'll hear the kids crying in the background, maybe a dog bark and maybe a rooster crow at some point, And then it's just... Yeah, not our voices. Maybe a car's yeah, driving by. Back. Joe furiously shucking corn. <laughs> okay, so I've been to the <laughs> the original Pawn Stars, or not Pawn Stars, darn it. American Pickers shop in Le Claire, Iowa, and then the second one in Nashville, Tennessee. Feels like everything's in Nashville these days. It used to be like it uh, is, uh, but I prefer Memphis to Nashville. Wasn't Nashville like a big music scene? They're both big music scenes. Well, it's like, just that every it's like all the awards and the Hall of Fames are in Nashville. Oh yeah, but it seems like all the voice acting gigs are also there too, not just in LA. Yeah, I mean. But, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So here's my little postcard from the other day. Uh, if anyone, this is timely enough. If anyone ever shopped on I Am 8 Bit, which is this fun little online store for games and soundtracks to games and merchandise from games, uh, you might have received this postcard that's just like a green and black. Thing that says they're coming on it with some numbers and one of them's long enough that somebody figured out it was a phone number you call the phone number it's in roswell new mexico and so the internet managed to like figure everything out in like mostly it looks like eight hours honestly since it happened it's been like uh, i guess last monday when this goes out um but uh yeah um i got one and i called the number and i was fiddling around in my editing software trying to like decode it and whatever and i couldn't figure anything out but it's basically just a very very well done advertising campaign and that's the thing that annoys me though is because my time in business school and as like a film student as well i guess this kind of pisses me off like i'd rather know what your product actually is and be like yeah okay i'm either gonna buy that or i'm not rather than get this elaborate marketing scheme wait three months or however long it's gonna take for this mystery game to be revealed forget about it and be like oh that that's what it was well, okay well i'm not gonna buy it because it just annoyed me, so yeah. <laughs> Jokes on you. <laughs> I thought maybe some alien group had just dropped a card on your. It, it was fun for all of Porch. ten minutes. Then I was like, "All right, I got better things to do." <laughs> it was weird. Yeah, neither of you guys got one. Nope. All right, then it has to be I am eight bit. That's that's the consensus that everyone's reached because some people were like oh it's it's gotta be cold play and it's like what does cold play have to do with this um i don't know <clears throat> but yeah marketing can be media let that let that be a lesson um it's all you film students or media students <laughs> then speaking of which i applied to ku again for another job so uh-oh better keep my mouth shut <laughs> uh what's the job this time uh it's actually what uh our favorite john mccluskey his position he got a nice promotion uh as the like building manager i guess because he's now taken over what uh 
what's been vacant for almost three years, I guess, two years. I don't know. Um, and so, yeah, like the technical assistant position is open. So that'd be actually fun to have because then I could yell at kids and play with cameras. <laughs> of course you would. Yeah. Everything I'm qualified okay. to do. <laughs> yeah, just yell at I the wish... kids about not wrapping cords right. Oh, God. Uh, luckily, John never yelled at me about anything, so I, I feel blessed and lucky. Or maybe yeah. I just knew how to, you know, wrap a cord. See, I only yeah. got yelled at one time, and it wasn't necessarily directed at me. I just was the only one in the room <laughs> <laughs> working on someone else's project, and it was in the recording booth that apparently wasn't scheduled out very well. So he's like, why are you in here? You're not supposed to be moving stuff around. I'm like, I was told everything was squared away with you. He's like, oh, okay, sorry, bye. <laughs> I... I had the fun of watching John actually rap. <laughs> oh boy. Because, yeah, Cause actually, was... that was yeah. sort of his, like, first. I wonder if we can find any of his, like, old stuff real quick. Uh, if I just Google him. Uh, I kind of wonder if Bob still has the recording. I really hope he saved it. Well, there's a John E. McCluskey Esquire attorney at law. <laughs> um, I like it, yeah. There's a John McCluskey fugitive convicted of murder dies in prison. So <laughs> I'm. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Uh, clearly, this like... is not. <laughs> McCluss McCluskey. Yeah, this doesn't look like the John I know. No. <laughs> Unless he's aged so many years. <laughs> no, that's not bad. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. it was it was cool because it was that night we had to be there for uh sound design and oh we had a guy who was actually a musician and a couple of his friends and so they were messing with instruments and we were recording them but then john also came in and he did he did a bit it's like that's john what <laughs> I guess my nephew has gotten into rap. Um, it's actually pretty good. And I usually have a very passionate dislike of rap, but yeah, it's, it's as noted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always love how fast they can move their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, And sometimes the fact that they just think it all up on the spot, too. Oh, freestyle is pretty impressive. Sometimes. Yeah. I love the memes of, like, uh, this one guy was just like, oh, yeah, I can just give me three words. I can come up with anything. This guy's like scissors, taco, and New Mexico or something. <laughs> <laughs> and how'd he do? It was actually impressive. <laughs> That's pretty good. I mean, I have a buddy who does that, but uh, I guess, well, I thought we were buddies. I think we're buddies. Yeah. Uh, but, um... I haven't really been watching any films lately, so... Uh, I mean, I did watch a film, but I kind of nod it off because I'm an old person. Oh. I also watched Spies Like Us last night. Yeah, <laughs> great, great movie. Great movie. It 
doctor, 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 <laughs> I shall make the first incision. What are you doing? You're cutting into his chest. Don't you know where his appendix is? Well, fine. Why don't you do it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. my it, God. It's actually a really fun movie. Photo Doom. I said fun again. <laughs> there we go. Everybody drink. <laughs> Um, yes. I actually have this, like, love-hate relationship with Chevy Chase because a lot of the, like, Griswold stuff he's in is, like, really over the top and just like, alright, it's kind of funny the first couple times and then it's just like, nah, it's just, it, it doesn't age well. But Spies Like Us, um, yeah, he's, he's holding back and that actually makes him a better actor i think funny farm was also another good one with chevy chase funny farm dan Aykroyd too yeah well dan Aykroyd has done a lot of interesting roles i mean he's dan Aykroyd's he, just he, canadian he tom hanks like isn't he what <laughs> dan Aykroyd's just canadian tom hanks isn't he Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I don't know how to respond to that. I mean, he kind of almost looks like Tom Hanks in certain pictures with sunglasses on. <laughs> We're on a mission from God. <laughs> love that movie. I love the Tom Hanks meme where they've like, I think it's Forrest Gump when he's waving and they just like splice the T and Hanks together. <laughs> just like thanks. Oh, um oh, what did I see? Um what's the guy's name? Brendan Fraser is like not dead. <laughs> yeah, Brendan Fraser? Yeah. However, you say his name. Um, yeah. He's you didn't know that? doing something I saw somewhere. Yeah, well, I he's... talked to you guys about it like last fall that he was doing uh, Mystery Men. No, wait, it's uh, that TV show. It's on HBO Max. It's uh... Friends. Oh, what's it called? Uh... Shoot. The Whale. That's what I saw. Um, this, like, 400-pound man or something. Um, yeah. Oh. Here's the, here's the little... A reclusive English teacher suffering from severe obesity who attempts to reconnect with his estranged teenage daughter for one last chance at redemption. Um. Oh, brother, it's directed by Darren Aronofsky. Yep. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna be a total depressing movie. <laughs> That's all Aronofsky does is seems like they're all depressing. Ooh, what's this behind the curtain of night? That looks like World War Two. Oh, this sounds really good. After being Patrol. declared dead for a second time, a man comes back to life with the ability to see his past lives. I'm interested. Yeah, I was talking about Doom Patrol. Oh, okay. Yeah, I talked about that like last fall at some point. Doom Patrol, and he was in there. Okay. So yeah, I knew he wasn't dead. <laughs> As Cliff dead Steel dead. and Robot Man, yeah. nothing sounds more cliched than those names <laughs> well he's doing what's that other uh oh yeah he's also doing no sudden move it's a steven soderbergh movie it's a bunch of really good actors in it, so. hopefully it won't be another ocean's 11 <laughs> or something I really liked, um, oh god, what was that? Inkheart. 
that was that was in those like unfortunate time when they did Incart and Aragon and critics were like, eh, it's not good. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I loved it. And I like wish that they continued on with the movies, but no. You talking yeah, about Incart or Aragon? Both. Like he wasn't in Aragon, but like just both of those movies I enjoyed. Like I don't ever recall watching Inkart, but I do remember Aragon, and I actually really enjoy Aragon. I know, and like if they continued, the second book has a lot of stuff that would have made for a great film. Yeah. You could have honestly split it up like uh, The Hobbit, even. Then you'd have like a whole bunch of money just rolling in. Because <laughs> clearly that's how it works. <laughs> Is it? Is that how it works? I didn't know. Well, we've got <laughs> The Hobbit, Star Wars, um... <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, there's are, are you finished or <laughs> there's a dot, dot, dot? <laughs> yeah, nothing else comes to mind at the moment. Uh, I really need to watch... Um... The other dread movie, um, like the, the other what? Dread, I'm a drama. Wow, I just spelled <laughs> Judge Dread so stupidly. Um, Are you talking about the old one or the new one? No, the I guess it's just called Dread, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the new one's just Dread. Well, it's not probably new. not it's as entertaining. Jeez. <laughs> As opposed to Sylvester Stallone's version, it's I the am new... no, no. <laughs> I am the <Nora. laughs> Yeah. Oh man, that was that movie was hilarious. hilarious. It's great, honestly. Oh, is um, is Dread supposed to be a direct continuation? I don't know. Is it? I don't remember. I know that I've seen Dread. I just don't remember anything about Dread. It's wow, been... it's almost been ten years. That's so weird to think about. <laughs> yeah, and I saw it like once. I've done things since then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some things I'm proud of. Some things I'm not. <laughs> ha! 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 ha. Empire. <laughs> this review made me chuckle. There is much to dread about the new iteration of <laughs> Dread. <laughs> Okay, so he's either getting brownie points or... Uh... Or he's in Siberia now for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I think what would be really oh. fun, especially now after coronavirus, if we're going to try and make any um, uh, pandemic film, but also a video game film... Uh, you could honestly try and do um, Plague Inc. Uh, they came out with a board game in like, I don't know, 2017 or something. Um, and I remember when uh, everybody in like school cafeterias was playing Plague Inc. I still play it every now. Actually, I haven't played it since COVID because I was like, this is going to be way too realistic. <laughs> Which game was that? Plague Inc. It's basically you're a mad scientist who releases a virus or bacteria or the simian flu from uh, Planet of the Apes or, like, a Dracula virus, and you have to try and, like, control it and infect and kill the whole world or, you know, just turn everybody into monkeys or whatever that the <laughs> thing is supposed to do. Um, I've never actually won even on easy mode. <laughs> it's actually... I either just suck or it's actually kind of hard. <laughs> Why does um, this look like Risk? It basically is, except it's not really. Um, it's like two very much just like two teams. Uh, well, yeah, you've got the virus, well, the the plague really, versus the cure. Um, but that was fun, um, and I think I think you could uh, maybe. Um, you could honestly, you know, just just make it COVID, 
um, and have it have it be a film. And uh, I think people would hate it for obvious reasons, but I'd love it. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously. You know, you just hop around. Oh, man, and the PC version with the uh, soundtrack where they play this, like, really creepy, slowed-down Ring Around the Rosies, it's like, oh, man, the, the very simple editing that they did <laughs> actually makes me not enjoy the PC version with sound on. <laughs> I mean, just bringing back that song to its roots. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is. <laughs> I mean, how many people, when they learned that fact about the song, was like, "Well, I how did that make it, the transition to really tie everything full circle?" I I learned about it through the lore podcast. So, uh... oh, look at that! Oh. You can actually have a COVID run on Play Game. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's right. They updated it last year when COVID first hit to. You're playing as uh, the cure this time. You're trying to cure the world instead of infect it. Uh, I might, I might play. That's not game. opportunistic at all, is it? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Land, where do you find this? <laughs> Coronavirus isn't Trump's fault. Ebola and swine flu weren't Obama's fault. SARS wasn't Bush's fault. But only a handful of herpes cases were Clinton's fault. <laughs> help myself. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Oh, for whatever reason, that just triggered a weird train of thought that led to the reminder that... Um, Ah, The Expanse, the fun sci-fi show, also on Amazon, which apparently there's a trend here because it's Amazon, it's getting cancelled, um, but it might also have something to do with the fact that, uh, oh, what's the dude's name? Not Wes Chatham. Maybe it is. What's your name? Um. Tony! Uh, not him. Uh, Cass Anvar, there we go. A um, little bit of a uh, hashtag me too there, apparently. Um, and unfortunately, he was my favorite uh, actor in that um, as the captain uh, of, like, the Mars uh, fleet or whatever. But, uh, yeah, he kind of did some sketchy stuff, and uh, he was quickly written off the show. <laughs> Um, but yeah, The Expanse is pretty good, um, really good, actually, uh, it's basically like a sci-fi mystery, sort of, I guess you could call it, for like the first three seasons, I think it aired on, um, sci-fi, is sci-fi channel even still like a thing, like I just don't watch cable anymore, so. I think it is. I don't, I don't know if that's still around. <laughs> wow, it was founded in 1992. But anyway, I guess The Expanse for the first two seasons ran on sci-fi, and then Amazon picked it up, and uh, it got better. <laughs> um, but yep, uh, season six is going to be the last episode of The Expanse. So we've got Bosch, we've got The Expanse, we've got Lore. Amazon needs to step up their game. They're canceling everything and they're not coming out with anything new. Well, I guess there's The Boys and Invincible, which are essentially just the same show. Just one's animated and one's live action. Um, but Invincible is, like quite the difference. is pretty good. Um <clears throat> I remember when sci-fi was still called the science fiction channel. Wow, you are old. <laughs> you yes, funny. I don't even remember that. <laughs> you say that, but you must have some balls to say that, because you know Landon's going to be 
chasing you down the block with his uh, his walker, (laughs) with his walk, (laughs) with the tennis balls on it. Please, I'm not. Scoot, scoot. (laughs) Wait a sec. Old man for condoms on mine, so that way I just slide. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, by the time Landon's in a retirement community, Elon Musk will just be selling Tesla branded like hover walkers or something. I think Elon's still older than I am. Yeah, but they'll have found a way to like transplant his head so he can just live on as a cyborg in a Tesla car. He'll just be the first transformer. Oh, with that perverse Optimus Musk. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Oh, there's some weird fan art. I'm sure I just didn't. Spot no, there. no, no. Zip it, zip it. You're not bringing up Transformers. Optimus Musk, please somebody draw that and send it to me. It'll be an Aspergertron. All right, we're over an hour. We can, we can. All right, yeah, Why did you have to bring up Transformers? <laughs> and cut. All right. All right. Uh, well, thanks everybody for for listening to this hour's worth of nonsense, and hopefully you continue to listen. Apparently, we had somebody who told Stuart straight to the face that he he appreciates the podcast. Wow, I'm still in shock about that, but um... and I've forgotten them unfortunately, but I, I won't forget you in spirit. Uh if you see me, <laughs> just just give me a slap to the face. Uh or you know, could comment so we know. <laughs> but if you do slap Stuart, please record it. <laughs> Especially so that, yeah. that can be used as exhibit A and that's how the podcast gets funded. <laughs> <laughs> just through a salt trial. <laughs> Well, I, I I think it would be a great way to start the podcast. <laughs> well, we we do have the assault trial coming up with the hot ones challenge, right? Oh, oh boy. Yep. When did we, we still have that? For what the fourteenth? I whatever? don't know because work is just a mess. They they're changing my schedule every single week at this point, and I'm like, but I I want to not have feeling in my face for the rest of the year so please give me time off <laughs> so uh i don't know uh 11 through the 14th of june yeah i don't know it's it's honestly gonna have to be like a monday tuesday wednesday sort of thing at this point because weekends are not great okay yeah yeah What's wrong with the Friday night? Like during a podcast, we could do it live. Well, yeah, that's that's true. Wow. We're yeah. doing it live. Oh, there's a meme. <laughs> yeah, Bill O'Reilly. I remember seeing that while I was at a gym one time, and I was running, and and it popped up, and it was like on the news or something. Oh like, my god, it. you saw the real thing. Yeah, I saw the like the live feed. <laughs> Which well, one? I, I'm gonna take that back. It was not the live feed, but it was like the day after. It was when Inside Edition was like, "Oh, scandal on Fox and Friends or whatever." Yeah, something <laughs> something along those lines. It was like the day after, but I actually did see the act the the footage of it nice yeah which scandal was it the meme where it's like fuck it we'll do it live and he left his radio or wow radio his uh hey he was still being recorded and lovely oh, his mic was on. Do it live. and then he's just fuck it yeah and then something came out like a a couple weeks later or like a month later and, and a kid was doing it just like imitating him and yeah it, it was this whole thing. It's funny, you know, you, you gotta... Everyone loves to hate YouTube these days, but, I, you know, when it, when it comes down to it, it's like, well, they're not nearly as regulated as, you know, like radio and television. So you can say just about anything on YouTube. <clears throat> Joe, don't you dare. 
<laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> I've already up tested it. <laughs> I've cleaned up my act. But you know, there's there's certain things out there that it's it's weird. And I mean, yeah, that's that's a story for a different time. Let's let's wrap this one up. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, that was that was film dudes. I don't have outro <laughs> capabilities apparently. I just have exciting intro, and then I'm just like, okay, bye. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right then, <laughs> I guess we're done. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Until next time. Bye. I'll be there. Adios. One more for good measure. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye.